All right, guys, um, here we go. Study guide, algebra one, unit five, standard form of the quadratic function is gonna be y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. The vertical line that divides the parabola into two equal parts is the axis of symmetry. Or, as I call it, the AOS. A vertex that is the lowest point on the graph. So like if you were to graph it, okay, it would be that point and that would be your minimum. Hopefully I'm spelling everything right. The formula for the axis of symmetry is gonna be x equals negative b over two times a. Maybe I could zoom in a bit. The points at which the parabola crosses the x-axis, we haven't talked a lot about that, but that would be your zeros, your solutions, your x-intercepts, and sometimes we might even call them roots. Okay, so looking down here, a graph that has a maximum, and it says that there could be more than one. So um, if I zoom out, maybe we could get a better picture of this. But a graph that has a maximum would be C and F. So C and F. The y-intercept as the or at, at the origin. Um, there's two of those, B and C. B and C. Axis of symmetry that is negative three. <clears throat> There's only one of those. And that's right here, ah, which you can't really see. And E, the axis of symmetry at the Y axis, right here, that is D, as in dog. And the graph that has one x-intercept, so just one x-intercept, would be this graph right here. It's only touching it or crossing it at one place. So we're going to say A. All right, now we're going to turn our papers over. And we are going to draw the axis of symmetry. So right here, we'll draw it in. And we'll see that it crosses through one on the x-axis, so we would say x equals one. The vertex would be right here, and that coordinate would be one comma four, over one, up four. Label the x-intercepts, so right here, and one of our x-intercepts would be negative one comma zero. From the origin to the left one, not up any, so zero. And this one over three and up zero. The y-intercept would be right here and that would be three, whoops, sorry, that would be zero comma, three. You haven't gone any left or right, but you've gone up three. The domain of the function, we start at the left and we hit an arrow, right? So negative infinity, and then we follow it over, follow it over, and positive infinity. Or if you wanted to say all real numbers, that would work too. And the range, remember we start at the bottom, so we hit negative infinity, right? It's going down and boom, we stop right up here at a positive four. So the four is gonna have a bracket and infinity, a parenthesis. If you wanted to write that, you would say that y is gonna be less than or equal to four, right? All of our y values are down beneath four. We can tell that the a value is negative because it opens downward.
Okay, so first thing that we want to do, we want to find the axis of symmetry down here. So remember that that's negative b over 2a. So I'm going to do negative and look right here for my b, which is negative 2, over 2 times my a, which is negative 1. So I'm going to get positive 2, negative, negative, over negative 1 and get an axis of symmetry of negative 2. So x equals negative 2. All right, for my vertex, remember, I have to plug this negative 2 into the equation. So I'm going to get negative, negative 2 squared, minus 2, times negative 2, and then minus 8. Well, negative 2 squared is positive 2, but then I have this negative out here, so it becomes negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4 and then minus 8. <laughs> I guess I didn't need a double plus sign. So these two will cancel out and my answer will be negative 8. So a negative 4, positive 4 would be 0 and then minus 8. So my vertex is negative 2 comma negative 8. It opens downward according to our a, so that means it would look like this and it would have a maximum. Moving along over here, I look for my a, it's positive, so I know it's gonna open upwards like a little smiley face, so we can answer that first, it's a minimum. And then I have an axis of symmetry, so I'm gonna take negative six, negative b, so negative, positive six, over 2 times my a, which is 1. So negative 6 over 2 is going to give me negative 3. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and write x equals negative 3. And then for my vertex, I'm just going to plug it in. So I'm going to do y equals negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 and then plus 5. Negative 3 squared is going to be a positive 9 minus 18 plus 5. Well, 9 minus 18 is going to be negative 9, and then plus 5 is going to give me a negative 4. So I'll know my vertex is negative 3, negative 4. Okay, let's turn the paper over and graph the following using a table. Okay, so first things first, I can look at this and since it's in standard form, I can instantly know my y-intercept is gonna be plus seven. All right, so I'm just gonna make that easy and if my y-intercept is seven, then I know that I can go zero comma seven. Now I'm gonna figure out my AOS. So I'm going to do x equals negative, negative 8 over 2 times my a term, which is negative 1. That becomes a positive. So I'll have 8 over 2, which is going to equal 4. So my AOS is equal to 4. All right, I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to plot my axis of symmetry. Well, that's pretty cool because as soon as I do that, I actually know one, two, three, four. That I can count over one, two, three, four. And I have another point on my graph. So we'll put that in the table in a minute. But for now, I'm gonna use my vertex. So I'm gonna do four, I'm gonna square it, minus eight times four, and then plus 7. So this is going to be 16 minus 32 plus 7. Negative 16 plus 7 is going to give me negative 9. So I now know my vertex, which I'm going to put in the middle here, is going to be 4, negative 9. 
So over four, down nine. Um, if I wanted to plug in more numbers, that's fine. Um, but I do know that this number over here is going to be eight and then up seven. So I also know I have eight and up seven. I have a rough idea of what my graph looks like, right? I could just kind of plot it like this if I wanted to. And if I want to plot in different numbers, I could do two, I would get negative five. And I could also do six and I would get negative five. So over two, negative five, and six and negative five. Okay, that's one way of doing it, just plugging numbers in. Another way is, let's go ahead and find my vertex. I'm gonna plug it in right here. So I'm gonna do negative B, which is gonna be negative six over two times my A, which is three. So I'm gonna get negative six and divide it by six. I'm gonna get negative one. So I know my vertex is gonna be, or my axis of symmetry is gonna be negative one, so AOS equals negative one. I'll go ahead and just plot that line. And I know the x value of my vertex is gonna be somewhere along there. So I'm gonna plug it into this equation. I'm gonna do three times negative one squared plus six times negative one. All right, well, negative one squared is three plus negative six. Six times negative one is gonna give me negative three. So I know my vertex is negative three. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plot that point. Negative one, negative three. I'm gonna notice that it does open upwards. So I'm gonna just go down. I'm gonna go negative two, I'm gonna go negative three. I'm gonna go zero. I'm going to go 1. Okay, so let's plug in 0 first. When I plug in 0, that cancels everything out, right? 6 times 0 is 0. 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0. So I know one of my points is 0, 0, which means that's one unit away from my axis of symmetry. I can count over the other unit. And that's negative 3, and that will be 0. Now let's just plug in, uh, let's plug in 1, because that might be a little bit more straightforward. So 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1. So 1 squared is 1 times 3, and then 6 times 1 is 6, which will give me 9. So over 1, up 9. All right, well, I can see that that's one, two units away from my axis of symmetry, so I'm going to count the other way, one, two. And I'll see that negative two is nine. Whoops. Sorry, I did that backwards. <laughs> this is zero. This is nine. Oh, goodness. Hopefully that's not too confusing for you guys. All right, let's graph using either method. So again, um, I'm gonna just plot my y-intercept, just knowing like, oh, whatever my c-value is, is my y-intercept. So I'll just plot that first. And I know that's gonna be zero, nine. Well, I'll just write that point over here. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna find my vertex. So I'm gonna do negative b, negative eight, over two times one. Negative eight over two equals negative four. So I know my axis of symmetry is gonna be somewhere along here, this negative four. All right, now that I know that this is nine, I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, and then count over the other way. One, two, three, four. So I see that that is at negative eight, so I'm gonna go negative eight up nine. 
and then I know this is zero and up nine. So let's just go ahead and find my vertex. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in. So I'm gonna have negative four squared plus eight times negative four plus nine. 16, this is a negative four, minus 32 plus nine will, this will be negative 16 plus nine, which will give me negative seven. So when I plug in negative four, I get a negative seven. So let's go ahead and plot that. And now I have a rough idea, I have three points, and a rough idea of what my graph looks like. Okay, let's flip our papers over. And right here, same idea. I'm just gonna do negative eight. That's gonna be my y-intercept. So I'm gonna go over zero, negative eight. I'm just gonna put it at the top of my table. Next up, I'm gonna find my AOS, right? It's gonna be negative B, which will be a negative and 12. I'll zoom in a little for you guys over two times my a, which is negative two. All right, negative 12 over negative four is gonna give me a positive three. So I know my axis of symmetry is gonna be a positive three. I'll just go ahead and pencil that line in. And then, now that I know my axis of symmetry, which I'll just put right here, I can go ahead and count over one two, three units, and then one, two, three units this way, and I have another point here for my table or my coordinates. And I see that that is over six and down eight. I do want to figure out what my vertex is, so I'm going to plug this three in. I'm going to do negative two times three squared plus 12 times three minus 8. And I'm going to get negative 18 plus 36 minus 8. That would be 18 minus 8, which will give me 10. So over 3, up 10. Which makes sense, right? Because now it's pointing down and that was a negative. So, there we go. Let's um, scroll up a little to this one. All right, so first of all, opposite day for my vertex, right? I instantly know my vertex is gonna be negative three comma four. All right, I also know my axis of symmetry is gonna be negative three. So I'm gonna first off go ahead and go negative three. I'm gonna draw on my axis of symmetry. All right, and then I'm gonna plot my vertex. So over negative three, four. And I can see it's positive, so it opens up. So for my x transformation, my x, I'm gonna ah, subtract three. And my y, I'm going to subtract four. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some tables here. I'm gonna take my original x and y from the parent function, which is gonna be negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and four, one, zero, one, and four. And I'm gonna apply from based off of this rule, the um, what's happening, so x, minus three, All right? So that's gonna be negative two minus three, negative one minus three, zero minus three, one minus three, two minus three. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna end up with negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, and negative one. Ah! 
whoops, sorry, not for that. <laughs> Goodness, I am gonna end up with those, but I'm gonna end up with those as my final numbers. Negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, and negative one. Okay, now I'm gonna look to my y's, all right? So my y, I know that I'm going to be subtracting four. So I'm gonna to look to these y values and I'm going to do four minus four. One minus four. Zero minus four. One minus four. Four minus four. And I'm gonna write my new y values over here. Four minus four is zero. One minus four is negative three. Zero minus four is negative four. Again, one minus four is negative three, and four minus four is zero. Mirror images, right? Or a reflection. So let's go ahead and plot these points. Negative five, zero. Oh, I forgot I plotted that in the wrong spot, the vertex. Um, negative 4, negative 3, negative 3, negative 4. There's my vertex that I plotted in the wrong spot. Negative 2, negative 3, and negative 1, 0. And there's my graph. Okay, last one here. I'm not going to fill in the chart like I did last time, the complete chart, but I am going to identify my vertex, which it's opposite day. So my x is going to be a positive 2, and my y is going to be a positive 3. All right, my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 2. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pencil in that line. And then I'm going to double check to make sure I have the right vertex this time. Yes, positive 2, positive 3. Keep in mind, this one's going to open down. So for my rules for my x, my transformation, it's going to be x plus 2. And my y, notice there's two things happening. My y is going to be multiplied by negative 2. And then we're going to add 3. So I'm going to do x and y. I'm just going to plot the parent function here. Remember, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And get 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. OK, so I'm not going to do that middle column this time. But I'm going to look at my x, and I'm going to add 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is going to give me 0. All right, and then I'm going to look at my next x, negative 1 plus 2. And that'll be 1. 0 plus 2 will be 2. 1 plus 2 will be 3. And 2 plus 2 will be 4. Okay, last but not least, I'm looking to my y's now. So for each y, I'm going to multiply by negative 2 and then add 3. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, plus 3 is going to be negative 5. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 3 will be 1. 0 times negative 2 is 0, plus 3 will be 3. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 3 will be 1. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 3, which will be negative 5. All right, remember, they're reflections of each other, or images. So let's go ahead and plot these now. So over 1, up 1, over 2, up 3, OK. Over 0, down negative 5, looks good to me. Over 3, up 1, and over 4, down negative 5. 
All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope that you are understanding, and I will see you soon. Good luck.